Hello everybody, I'm Serti, and we are playing Big Ambitions. I've been waiting for this game for a long time, so it's very exciting, and I've spent 50 hours in game already, and uh, yeah, if you've played, you'll realize the numbers reflect the, the amount of effort I've put in, uh, and these aren't even the best part. Okay, so we're going to cover the top 10. This is an RPG business sim, and there are a few little things that are handy to know, so... These are my top 10 tips for big ambitions. Number one, maps and movement. The first thing you're going to want to know is how to move around. It's not like other games that I've played. So you would rotate using your right mouse button. Moving, you click on your left mouse button and your player moves to wherever, but that can become a bit annoying. So you can click your middle mouse button and your player will follow the cursor. And at the same time, you can rotate using the right mouse button. One thing to remember is just always have breakfast. I've had breakfast. Uh, these are your stats, your energy, your hunger, and your happiness. You can get happiness from various things, such as watching TV, playing games, or going to the casino. The casino is a big one. I pre-recorded a casino trip, and uh, we'll have a look at that later. It was quite a nice one. Right, so the map. You will do most of your work on your phone and on your phone you have Google Maps we'll open that up and from Google Maps you can see everything that's going on these little ones with keys next to them are my businesses the the little ones that look like steering wheels are my vehicles and it doesn't show all of them because I have warehouses with vehicles but I a warehouse with vehicles but you can also filter so if I was looking for a residential building I could just click residential and here's all the residential buildings available to rent. These are pretty cool. You can go in, you can open up in business, Bizman. This doesn't show very much information because it's a occupied property. Find one that's not occupied. This one's available for rent. Your deposit, your electrical appliances, your daily rent, and you can preview it. That's a nice little apartment. Okay. This is kind of... Uh, once you've got past your first couple of businesses, this is the kind of apartment that you would go for. But it gives all sorts of other information. So if you wanted to start a business uh, and it's in retail, you want to click on the retail filter. And you can also uh, look per area. So if you want to only in the garment district, that is this district down here, you can move around the map with your WASD. So you can see the district that you're looking in. Hell's Kitchen is up north. Midtown is the very expensive area and Murray Hill is Murray Hill is next to you. All right, now the important thing for retail buildings. I don't know if there's anyone in here available for rent. Okay, so what you need to look for are these numbers. What you need to look for are these numbers. You have your traffic index, 36 is kind of low, 225 square meters. That's that's pretty big, not a not for a starter business. You have a traffic a capacity of 30 per hour of people coming into your store. That's your capacity. So those are the numbers that you've got to look out for. Now, they, they will be better than that. This one's a 35 and a 30, no great shakes. And here's a 37 and a 75. This this allows a lot of people in. Um, that's, that's pretty big, but it's also a very big space to fill. This is a 38 with 30. So you're looking... Probably in the, the 40s, mid 40s to 50, there's, there's only a few at 50, but uh, mid 40s would probably be a good traffic index for, for really high demand. And then this number determines the amount of equipment that you'll need in your shop, which then you can, you can drive to, you can set a destination, and you can use your GPS to, to drive to that location. That brings us to number two, your Bizman app. If you click on that, you can see all your stores. And uh, don't worry about threads. I haven't finished setting it up yet. But let's let's go and have a look at Pants Optional, for example. Now, this is a good one because the interior, they're not happy with because I haven't got it at 100%. And I think the reason that it, for that is because I haven't done the walls and floors in the storeroom. Not a problem. What, what you're really interested in is making sure that you get your satisfaction to 100%, which means that all of these items need to get to 100%. And through these tips, I will show you how to do that. Tip number three will be business types. So this is a clothing store. Uh, I have found them to be the most profitable. And when you build a, a clothing store, every store has costs to set up. 
obviously you've got to do decorations you've got to buy equipment um, to carry your your product and uh, storage shelves and so on you will need cash registers or checkout counters and depending on the kind of business some businesses prefer to have checkout counters some do both but this one has cash registers which offer 20 capacity so I have two because my building uh, my building calls for 30 and in order to maximize I, I need to have two cash registers which means that I need two staff to man those cash registers in addition to that I need clothing racks and it's per product so each of the clothing racks satisfy 10 of your capacity so you need three to get to the 30 and that is per product that you're selling so the cheap uh, female clothing here needs 30 uh, the expensive female clothing 30 and so on so if you're going to put extra stuff in your shop just bear in mind that new products will require equipment that will handle the capacity up to the top and most places will need shopping baskets each of them are 30 and the other equipment for for business setups are all pretty much the same you have different business types so you can have law firms liquor stores gift shops clothing stores supermarkets jewelry stores coffee shops web development agencies uh, they, i think i've got everything except the, the florist is missing and all of them have have different requirements on what shelves you put in them for the various products tip number four most of the time at the beginning you're going to be running a lot if you're playing in story mode eventually you will get a car from uncle fred don't let Uncle Fred push you too hard. Uh, you don't want to try and meet his requirements too quickly. Make sure that you build up a business, maximize it as much as possible, and then save money towards the next business. Even if you take a loan, you might want to go a bit bigger uh, to, to maximize the next business faster. So there are other ways to travel around other than your own car and walking. And that is to go and find yourself either a taxi. So let's grab a taxi. And... I want the taxi to take me to this building and travel there and just like that i'm there now the other way to travel is with the subway and that's pretty quick so we'd have to find a subway station so we go to google maps uh, there's a subway station right in front of me so we head to the subway station when you it, it seems like when you're outside sh you, you're automatically running if you press shift you walk but inside it's opposite so yeah so we're going to take our subway by clicking on it and then we want to get sort of back closer to where we were which would be or oh, this would be the closest click on it and we travel back and we're back tip number five loans and investments All right it's going to be very important in early game to to have money on hand and you're not going to be starting with very much um, if you're playing a custom game you can set how much you want if you're starting with uncle fred now uh, it's uh you you start off with a bit but it's enough to get your first business up and running and pretty optimized but there there are banks there are two of them this is jensen capital and the other one's band uh, something bank and in here you can come and take a new loan and I would advise taking smaller loans even if you take a whole bunch of smaller loans like a thousand each uh, because you can then pay them off thing is if you take a ten thousand loan you're going to be paying six until that loan is settled and you won't have a choice in that it, it'll just be six every day until that loan is settled however if you take ten one thousands you're still you're paying a little bit more but you can pay them off i think there is a sweet spot around 940 odd per loan which yeah it's not really uh, it's not really important how you do it but this it's just makes it easier to pay your loans off and get rid of those daily payments that you're having to make by taking smaller loans so it's just something to bear in mind also in the bank you can do investments so if you want to take a new investment you can select the investment and they're a bit weird because you lose money on on some of them they say high risk low risk and this is obviously lower but uh, I haven't been able to make money on the on the high risk or the medium risk, what they would consider medium risk. But then you put your amount in and you invest it. And if you're using this one, you generally just tend to to make money on your investment. It's very little, but it's better than keeping money in the bank. 
And if you ever want to see what your um, your loans or investments look like, you can pop in here, you can have a look at your loans. I don't have any at this stage. All of mine are paid off. But I do have a couple of investments. Uh, I've got one with Jensen, and I've got another one with Vanterde Bank. Vantander. Yep, with that one. So that's where we stand. You can also buy buildings. But depending on where you get them, you're going to get a good return. Um, if we have a look at Google Maps again, I wouldn't suggest getting any businesses in the gone. I mean, uh, buildings in the Garment District or Hell's Kitchen. It seems like um, Midtown and Murray Hill, Midtown especially, but both of those will give you a fairly decent return on the rental rate per, per square meter. Hell's Kitchen and Garment District are just uh, pretty low incomes. I do have one business uh, or one building that I've bought and I'm only making $177 a, a day on it because the, the rental is 0.24 per square meter, whereas if you have a look at the bigger buildings in Midtown area, you're looking at like over $2 per uh, per square meter per day. So I think that pretty much wraps up what I can say about loans and investments. Tip number six, Stakehorn Design. Okay, here's a, a small shop. This is called This is called Pants Optional and it's a clothing store, and I've just got a few little bits and pieces to, to boost it up. However, you'll notice that I have an interior of 76%. It seems like some businesses actually take the storeroom into account. If you want to get your, your interior up to 100%, you need to do the walls and the floors, and to do that, you would click on your interior designer, and it seems the more expensive uh, the the item that you use to to cover the walls and floors the more expensive the the higher the the return now i don't have 100 percent here because it seems people walk into the storeroom which is quite strange however um all my other businesses are at 100 percent, so i'm not too worried uh, this one still brings in a bit of cash so it's, it's okay so let's revert and move around now i also have plants i have uh lamps these changing rooms, I don't know if they add any value, but I've put them in. I've just got a counter for, for no apparent reason. I've got a sofa, I've got a coffee table. Just general things to make the store uh, a little bit more pleasing. And that tends to, to bring customers in and make things work. In this store, I've got cash registers. I should probably have um, the checkout counters. But it works for here. So this, this is not a big store, so I'm quite happy with that. If you do want to change the color of items that you've bought, so for example, this, let's let's have a look at this table. Okay. You can open Interior Designer and then right-click on the table and you can change colors of the table. Or reset. Or you can add your own hex color, whatever you choose to put in. There is a cost to it. So if I was to, to change this, uh, it's $30. It is pretty expensive. So maybe something that you want to think about late game. It's a, it's not a very nice mechanic because you don't get to choose the colors when you buy the stuff, which, yeah, you, you just have to change them afterwards. Most, most items can be customized. So that can be customized. That can, the counter can be customized. I'm not sure about the racks. Oh, even the clothing racks can be customized. Just bear in mind that there are costs to it. Right, early in the morning again. Always remember, have breakfast because your stats all affect each other. So if you're unhappy, your energy goes down. If you are low in energy, everything else is affected. Yeah, so just keep those stats up as high as possible. And okay, we can move on to the next tip. Tip number seven, training in HR. Right, when you employ people, which you're going to want to do, you're going to go to your contacts. Now, I don't know if I've said this, but any business that you go into, go to the manager, sit at the manager's table or the uh, the salesperson's table. And once you've done that, you will be able to access all of those people through your contacts and you, will be, you won't have to travel there anymore. You can order stuff from them. So, for example, I can go to the banks and do whatever I need to do there. But there's also recruitment. Now, you don't necessarily early game have to rush into recruiting. You want to make as much money as possible and staff do chew up your money if you are standing around watching them work. So 
but you will eventually want people. So for example, we could hire someone and you the things to watch out for, obviously, the hourly rate. You can ask your guys to choose for a... They, they will ask you to, to say, okay, what business are you recruiting people for? And what is their primary skill? And that primary skill will generally be based on that business. So if I was to be hiring people for... What is that new one? Threads primary skill will be customer service or cleaning those are the only two types of people that you need in the business and then they would give you a list and you would be able to have a look now generally i try and go for full-time people this is for cleaning you don't really need full-time people because you know you don't have to have someone there but if they're cheap enough you can have them and keep the store clean because that's one of the requirements for a business to to be successful then you also have your customer service people they, generate, they always have a cleaning component available, so you can use them for cleaning if need be. Then also look for their requirements. They want full-time. This person here wants no evening shifts. Uh, I generally tend to stay away from the people who have these extra requirements. You can always find good people that don't have them. This person's part-time, not someone I'd choose. But, you know, uh, hourly rates of 20 or below is, is pretty cheap. Now, once you've once you've recruited them, you just basically hire them. They will show up in your My Employees. So you'll have your list of employees. And let's grab a customer service person. Now, they are very low on, on cleaning, but they're at 100% on customer service. There's no training button next to them. If I wanted to train them, I would have to, I would have to unassign them from the business in order for them to train, which means that that slot would be open and there would be no one working that business right at that time so either you would have to fill the slot or you'd have to hire another person but you you need to train your customer service up to 100 percent in order to get this customer service up to 100 percent. so this averages out your employees and gives you an average score which affects the overall satisfaction of your store which then affects the number of customers that come in so it's, it's all tied together so looking at my employees i have a whole bunch of them and uh, I think all of them are up to 100% now, but not all because of me. Uh, each time you, you train someone, that training will increase their, their skill by 10%. Uh, so you have to do it quite a lot of times, especially if you employ someone with like a 25% uh, customer service skill. Uh, it would take quite a long time. But later on, you do get HR managers who you can hire. Uh, you, hire, you hire those HR managers from a different recruitment agency called City Workforce. And in here, you can call them and say, all right, well, I'm looking for someone for head office. Uh, what was head office? The bottom line. And those are the three options you get. Purchasing agents, logistics managers, and HR. Those are the people that work in your head office. So we're going to cancel that because I already have all the people I need. Now, if we go to Bizman, here's our head office, our headquarters, and go to HR managers. Now, HR managers are, you assign the employees to the HR managers, and you can set HR managers to automatically train people up to whatever level you want, them, which they will do. It's much slower than the than, than you training them yourself, but they don't get, they don't take time off work. So that's the trade-off. The HR managers also require training. So... Once they get to 100%, they're able to deal with 25 employees. I think 90% is 20, 50% is like 10 or something. But yeah, I would recommend just train the HR managers yourself up to 100% before you even put them at a desk. And then you can ass assign employees and everyone's happy. And now it's very easy to have a look and see if you have any unhappy employees just by looking at the satisfaction over here and all my employees are 100% happy. So that's awesome. While I'm on the HR and training, if you go to a business, you need to assign a, a an employee to a business. So you can take a business guy, uh, he's he's cleaning, you can assign him, choose the, the place you want to send him to, and that's where he will be assigned. But he isn't just going to work automatically. You need to go to that business. So let's go to Clothes Minded, and then in the schedule, once you've assigned them, they will pop up over here and then you can set your schedules with them and you can choose to share them. You, you can choose to share the schedule every day 
but the one thing you got to look out for is the requirements so this guy wants full time and full time is between 40 and 50 hours i think or 35 and 50 and then there are people that will only want part time which is uh, up to 30 hours i believe if you have them assigned to the business and they aren't put into a work slot they are going to lose happiness and eventually they will quit so something to bear in mind and yeah if you want to just assign them to a slot you can just drag them into that slot and they will be placed there you can also have split shifts so for example this 7 to 2 i could change to a 6 to 1 and then have an hour's break in between and then move all the the people around to accommodate i think that pretty much covers everything just keep an eye on the happiness make sure that they are getting the requirements that they have asked for you can also auto fill all um, and that's that allows your the program just to to put everybody in and meet their and meet their criteria but i don't really use that much i prefer just to put my people in as i would like them to be tip number eight requires that we take a trip down to the docks there are four different import companies and each import company requires that you assign at least one or only one purchasing agent so you will need four purchasing agents eventually and if you go into the import places and you go to the table you can sit down with the guy okay he won't talk to you now because you've already assigned a purchasing agent to, to deal with him purchasing agents sit at head office so if we if we go to head office i have purchasing agents and you can have a look at the the stuff that those particular jet cargo imports will bring in these items seaside international will bring in these items bluestone does basically just clothes and then united ocean imports does a bit more of the expensive stuff now your purchasing agents are responsible for ordering so you would order through them and eventually once you've refined things to your liking you can run scheduled deliveries which releases you even more to build more businesses so for example i have a, a bunch of things they've alloc been allocated to a warehouse which we'll cover in the next tip and those items when they're ordered will go to that warehouse and be distributed to the the shops that need them obviously this is the import part the delivery part we'd have to pop to a warehouse to go and have a look at so let's do that okay we'll pull up at my warehouse and park the vehicle and just run inside now i only have one warehouse because that's all i really need at the moment it's got a lot of racks in it and you can just walk around um i have two vehicles which i will talk about in the next tip but obviously i have a lot of space because i have a lot of racks that i that i've put in just in case i need to up my game a little so in order to accept deliveries from the importers you have to have a warehouse and you have to have shelves very important if you don't have them they have nowhere to deliver to and the order is just simply cancelled then you have to go and buy stuff by hand and that brings us to tip number eight which is logistics and vehicles so i have bought two vehicles and we'll pop down shortly and go and see where i bought them i have the the minivan which is called a umc desert and then i have a nice freight truck t1 okay now these will deliver from the warehouse to my shops if you go into your bizman to the head office and you go and have a look at your logistics manager now your logistics manager his skill will determine how many destinations can be delivered to also the vehicles now i've got a umc desert if i had two freight trucks i could probably deliver two more i haven't checked out the final numbers but up right now this will deliver up to 12 destinations i have 11 already so i'm probably going to have to get the the freight truck at some point so you can see your warehouse then and you can assign you obviously have to employ drivers you assign the driver to a vehicle and that driver that driver will be able to deliver your inventory to your businesses that pretty much covers it let's go and have a look at where you can buy vehicles there are a couple of places some better than others let's see if i can get there without crashing my car again huh, managed to get here without crashing you do get to know your way around so the more you play the the better you become at kind of finding things um bearing in mind that the roads are numbered and they they're pretty easy to to go for all right so 
this is kind of the freight car dealership. So you have the UMC deserts, they have a capacity of 20, and then you have your freight trucks, which have a capacity, I think, of 60. Anyway, so that's the one, and I if I remember correctly, I haven't been here for a long time, but this is the other, this is the cheap car dealership. Okay, so this is, if you're playing the story mode, this is going to be your first car, the Honza Mimic. Uh, I think it has a storage capacity of like four, maybe eight, can't remember. That's how many boxes it can carry. Uh, and then you have other vehicles. Uh, the UMC Desert has 20. I am not sure about the Vord. I haven't used it. But I assume it's probably going to be close to that. But the price is somewhat different. Um, that's 44,000, whereas your UMC Desert is only 20,000. Or so, no, I lie, 6,000. The Honza Mimic, which will probably be your first car, 2,500. That's when you need to get around faster. But there is one more place to have a look at. And that's in the rich side of town. Okay, uh, it was a bit late for us. They had closed, so we came home, had some sleep. We've had breakfast. Let's head out to the expensive car dealership. And if you want to find things, you can just click on the Google Maps and uh, let's say, yeah, car dealership. That is the one we're looking for. There'll be the other two that we visited. That's the one we're looking for. If you click on it, you can set a destination. But I'm going to wing it. All right, and off we go. And we're going to head down to Manhattan Car Sales. All right, we're here. They're open, so let's go inside and have a look. Okay, this is where the really expensive cars come from. Yeah, pretty cool. Now, now you'll notice that the car businesses don't have people. They've got coffee, but they don't have people at the desks. So you have to come into the car place to buy your cars, regardless of what cars. Let's see, what do we need for this? Oh, 720,000. Gee, I could buy a few of those. Um, and you can change the color. This is one of the few things you can change the color before you buy it. Oh, gross. I might just buy that just for fun. Anyway, so this is where you get the expensive cars. So that pretty much deals with the tip number nine, which is logistics and vehicles. Tip number 10 is the casino. So if you come down to the very last dock on a Friday between 6 o'clock and 10 o'clock in the evening, you can go to the casino. And this is an opportunity to, to make money, but you can also lose a lot. And off we go into international waters where gambling is legal. Right, we're on the casino boat. Um, let's hit the blackjack table and do something totally wild. I've uh, got 9.7. Let's put 9 million down. And see what happens. You never know. Well, that's a pretty good, that's a pretty good hand. I think I'll stick. Oh yes, look at that. Nine million one. You know what? The rest of the night doesn't need to do I don't need to do anything else. So yeah, that's that's basically what happens. And then that was a bonus. Wow. So I don't want to bet anymore. You can go and sit on a slot machine for the rest of the night and the time just goes. You can go and grab something to eat and drink if need be. Uh but as you can see, it boosts your happiness immensely. And obviously winning nine million is a huge boost to happiness. So Cool. And then at the end of the night, uh, you'll just get taken back and dropped off at the dock. So yeah, I'm not going to put you through all of that because it's a long night. You have to wait until five in the morning before you get sent back. And I think, I think that's where we're going to end this video because uh, you know, that's a, that's a good note to end the video on. So if you liked it, give us a like, um, hit subscribe if you want to see more, bell icon for notifications. And give us a comment. Let me know what you think of the game. Let me know if you, if, if the tips have been helpful to you. And uh, until next time, thanks for joining me and cheers.